Well, our next guest is an activist who's been working against racism since the mid-60s. He served as a as chair of the Third World Workers Association in the 1990s. He's taken his leadership role in the development of the Roxbury Neighborhood Council and the Greater Roxbury Neighborhood Authority. He's a wonderful public servant. He's the Boston City Councilor from Roxbury. here in the last half hour. I was uh, up on the fourth floor and, you know, I, I, uh, I could hear, you know, I could hear your applause, I could uh, hear your uh, enthusiasm, but you know, I could feel the energy <laughs> coming up the fourth floor. So I think you ought to give yourselves a round of applause. You're a great group. focus on uh, this evening is what I what I see as a struggle for the, the soul of this country. You know, on September 11th, there was a great tragedy that befell not only New York, but the, you know, the country. And it's, you know, it doesn't matter whether tragedies hit a family, a community, a nation, that it's, it's natural that we're going to feel great torrents of emotion. You know, that we're going to move into the depths of sadness, that we're going to feel the, uh, the chill of, of fear, we're going to even, uh, you know, encounter the, uh, the, the rages of the desire for revenge. But we are human beings. While we share with the animal kingdom those uh, variety of emotions, we have something that separates us from the animal kingdom, and that is we have the ability to fuse our minds with our morality. We have the ability, we have the ability to make choices that take us beyond the emotional, instinctive emotional choices of the path and allow us to think out new paths of behavior new ways to go, paths that move us forward, that encourage our growth and now enable us to link up with other peoples. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the Bush administration, at this moment of great opportunity for growth, has ch chosen, chosen to plunge us back into our history. And, hey, I hear what you're saying, brother. <laughs> but the, uh, you know, when, and what is that history? We have to be honest. That history is a history of terror and warfare that this country perpetrated, not only against those outside the country, but inside the country. Do we, do we have to talk about the 200 years of the history of this country in the beginning where where the people who controlled it said that we have a right to treat human beings as chattel, as if they are animals, as if they have no soul. That, that was the founding chapter in the history of this country. Should we, look at, should we look at the issues of our driving, the people who were here, when the first Americans came who were driven from their land 
from one area to another area and then caged in America's version of concentration camps? Talk it. That's terror, brothers and sisters. <laughs> to have been free, to be in free to roam the land, to, to deal with nature on its own terms, and then to be driven, driven into camps where you're no longer free, where, you, where you're captives. Do we have to talk about our taking land? from Mexico. When I grew up, the, the, the uh, Texas, the taking of Texas was seen as a great heroic movement, moment in the history of this country. Brothers and sisters, it wasn't an heroic movement. It was an act of war and terror. Do we, do we want to look at the, uh, the history of the struggle for workers to get a fair share of the profits that were earned from their labor? Do we want to look at the National Guard that was called out state by state to suppress those workers' rights to organize for a share of their, of their own labor? look at the history of women in this country? Do we want to look at the history of women in this country? Bush can talk all he wants about the way the Taliban deal with women, but no American president has a right to talk about how any country deals with the issue of women, given the terrorism, given the terrorism that women have had to face and continue to face in this country. says, I believe it's in time to bring an end to terrorism throughout the world. It's beyond time. We have to end the terror in the world. But how do we end the terror? We begin by looking at our own behavior. We begin to look country, we begin to look at the, the work that we did to uh, destabilize a democratic government in Chile. We have to look at that. We have to look at COINTELPRO, a government operation organized by the CIA that consciously tried to disrupt the activities of protest groups, American groups that had the right had the right under the Constitution to stand up and protest, but this government was not willing to allow them to do that. We have to look at our work in installing dictators throughout the world who were able to stay in power based upon our resources and the guns and military weapons that our industry supplied them. Terror, we are the instigators of terror throughout the world. Five thousand people that is estimated died in New York, a horrendous number. How many people died in Panama? when we sent American troops in to take out a dictator that we had installed and killed thousands of people in that process. Let us tell the truth about our country. Let us tell the truth about the terror that we have created in the world. Because we can't end terror unless we acknowledge our own terror.
We're killing innocent people. That's what we're doing. But not only are we killing innocent people, we are pouring into the military industrial complex billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. And what does that mean? It means we are again creating terrorism at the end. Why? Because those billions of dollars ought to be going into education so every child in this country can have a Those billions of dollars need to be going into health care so that every individual in this country can be assured of quality health care. Those billions of dollars need to be going into housing so that we can afford to live in the cities of this country. But the analysis of the problem has to be followed by action. The analysis of the problem has to be followed by action. What kinds of actions should we be taking? One thing, we should be joining the world court rather than standing in the background talking about peace. I recently asked my congressman, Congressman Capuano, why wasn't the United States moving forward to join the world court when it's talking about wanting to end terrorism by cooperation with other nations? All he could do, brothers and sisters, was shrug his shoulders. Because there's no logical answer that you can give. You can surmise that we don't want to be judged for our actions and therefore we don't want to commit to a court that one day could help hold America in judgment. Let me end though by um, bringing forward a thought that was shared by Dwight D. Eisenhower, amazing man. He was a general of the uh, Allied Forces, came back, became uh, president of this country. And when he left office in 1960, what did he say? He said, you have to be aware of the military industrial complex and its power. Why did he say it? He said it, he said it because he knew him. Who more, who better knew those who were in the military industrial con, con, uh, complex than Dwight D. Eisenhower? You know, he had been with them in many ways, and yet he said that we had to beware. And I think as we look at what is going on right now, we can see that complex growing in strength, growing in power growing in its savagery, and what is fueling us? It's being fueled, brothers and sisters, by our tax dollars. We say this is a democracy. We say that the people have control. Then isn't it time that we stand up and begin to determine where our money is being spent? Isn't it time, brothers and sisters? and to direct the resources of this government into those areas where it can take care of the people of this country and of the world. We have resources here, but we have to use them in a way that's guided by our mind, fused with our morality. And we all, we all have to acknowledge that we are part of this country, 
that the government that operates is our government. And that if we don't like the way it operates, then we have to remove it from power. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It seems sometimes impossible to pull this government and the people, so many of the people away from the frenzied this addiction to war and the creation of terrorism, but that's our responsibility. That's what we have to do, and brothers and sisters, I believe we can do it. Thank you very much. Politicians a good name, couldn't he? <laughs>